Welcome to my kitchen. So today I am sharing the recipe of char siu pork. In Japanese we call it yakibuta. So this is a topping for the ramen or you can use it for a stir fry or the uh, fried rice. So this is the ingredients. The main ingredients for char siu pork is the pork meat, shoulder or belly. I'm using the pork belly and then I already wrapped with the cotton string so it's tight and it doesn't fall apart when you're cooking or slicing. And this pork is going to be cooked in a soup stock. You can cook it just in a hot water but it tastes better with a soup stock with some kind of onions, ginger and garlic. So this chashu pork is a great topping for ramen. So when you're making the pork for the bone broth, um, all these ingredients are already in there. So you can cook the pork, the block of pork in the bone broth. That's easy. But if you're making just a chashu pork, you need these ingredients, the onions, garlic, and then ginger. And then you're gonna be boiling uh, the water and then Put all those vegetables with the char siu pork for 45 to 1 hour. And then you're going to be soaking into a kayashi sauce. So you will see the kayashi sauce recipe, how to make the kayashi sauce in the other video. So garlics, if it's clean enough, I just wash as it is and I don't even peel. I don't want to cut, I don't want to scratch anything and then you can just use as they are. And ginger, I usually don't peel the ginger and the ginger, I have to wash it. If you want to peel, you can peel it, but before you peel, you can take out all this little uh, parts and if it doesn't come out easy you can cut it so this is where usually the dirts are so you just need to take the little stems out and then wash it well and all this old cuts you want to cut it because that's you where usually the mold you want to cut them all and onions you wash under the uh, running water. I'm usually using just the green part. If you're using the leek, same thing. You just need to use the green part. And then save the white part for later for layu, the flavored oil, or something else, stir fry or any other things. If you are using the leek, you do need to cut this into vertical and then wash it well. The dirt are right where green starts from white part. So you just need to wash this part really well. And then cut the brown part. And you don't need to cut into pieces. This is what you need. And if you're using the onion, Cut the bottom, this could be very dirty, moldy sometimes, take them out and take the outside peel, you need to cut the top, so I don't go all the way so I will go just about till the end so it's still connected and then peel it and that way you can peel easier and then you will wash. And if you see any brown part, take them off. And this is how you use it. And here I am adding all the vegetables. Green part of long naganegi or leeks. And maybe onion if you want. 
garlic. I don't even peel. So I'm gonna put just a couple, but you can put six if you want. And ginger. So I have one and a half to two pounds of pork belly. You can use a pork shoulder if you don't want too fat, too much fat. And then the cotton strings. This is about seven, eight feet, uh, two to three meters. And I always go one and two with my arm. And that's about the just good uh, length. Now, uh, buy a block of the pork, shoulder or belly, and then if it's just a nice chunk, you can just wrap around and then tighten it. And if it's a long one like this, I would use the back of the knife and just tap it to make it a little bit soft. This is easier to work when it's uh, room temperature. If it's right out, out from the refrigerator, it might be not easy to work with. So just soften the meat so it's easy to roll. And then one side is spare, one side is thick, and then one side is thin, or both sides thin. It's better, so it closes well. And you're gonna roll from the thick side. So you want tight roll. So it doesn't fall apart when they're cooking or when you're slicing in. So you're gonna be rolling and rolling and rolling. And then takes about six, seven inch. Place it right on it. And first I'm gonna be tying here twice and very tight and just leave it here and then you're going to work with the long side you're going to go around and meet with the other side and what you're going to do is you're going to be rolling around this way with the long so just by few this is the clock 12 o'clock to one o'clock first and roll in the back and then go into the two o'clock three o'clock four five six and then i'm going to go back to the side and then rough it around so it closes this mouth. So there's two here. And if you have an extra, just wrap around one more time. And then I would go twice around so when you tighten it it doesn't get loose while you join the bow and this is ready okay now soup is cooking still with the vegetables now it's time to add pork so this goes in make sure it's underwater so one and a half pound to two pound, it will take about 45 minutes to one hour to cook. And now you're gonna be cooking for an hour uh, or so. And then always make sure that all the vegetables and bones are under water. So it's been 45 minutes. The meats are, the, uh, have been cooked. I'm going to check whether it's secure, um, bamboo secure. This is a big one, so it might not be ready, so I'm going to check. You're going to go hook all the way, and then take it out, 
and then if you see a pink juice, now pink juice is coming out, just, which means it's not ready. Now you're gonna, you're gonna poke the, poke the uh, smaller one and see if it's ready. And if it's ready, you can uh, easily poke it and then smooth to take it out. So this is not smooth. And then when I see a pink juice, it's not ready. So I'm gonna be letting let it cook for another 15 minutes, and then we'll check it again. Now another 15 minutes passed and I'm going to check the smallest one and so see the clear juice coming up so this is done if you want to really make sure you can use the thermometer and measure the internal temperature and it has to be 160 Fahrenheit or above Once it's done, you just need to take them out. So once char siu pork is done, take them out, uh, take it out from the soup, and then cool it just a little bit so it's not hot hot. I don't like to put the hot stuff in the plastic. And you can put the meat in, and just about. Half cup of kaeshi sauce. We take the, all the air out. So you're going to marinate it overnight at least. Just to make sure, put it in, in a bowl or container so it doesn't leak out and then keep it in the refrigerator and every couple hours or half day if you're doing in three days you will flip it over and it flip it over so it covers everything if you don't have time and you might forget to flip over I would cover the meat with cheesecloth and put it soak in in the sauce, so the sauce goes all over, and you don't you don't, you don't have to flip it. But it's best to flip it like so. Chashu pork is ready. I soaked in the refrigerator in kaeshi sauce in the Ziploc for two days. You can well, same as the egg. You're gonna drain it, and you're gonna save this kaeshi sauce. And save this kaishi sauce again for other dish like fried rice, stir fry, yakisoba. But I will use this for uh, ramen broth. So now the best part of chashu pork is a little burn outside barbecue. So before you barbecue or um, grill it, you want to take out the string. So you can cut several price places and it will be easy. You can use scissors. Yes. Discard the string. Now ready to go on a frying pan or grilled on. If you want to use the oven, you can do broil or go to charcoal and grill. Frying pan. If I'm in the United States at my house, I'm at the uh, temple kitchen at my brother's temple. So I didn't have the frying pan, my favorite frying pan. It's, uh, I usually use cast iron frying pan. Um, but today I have just a teflon coating, that's fine. So over medium to high heat and you're going to grill it. And fortunately, I'm in Kagoshima, my hometown, my brother's temple. And Kagoshima is very famous for black pink. It's called Kuro Buta. Kuro means black and Buta is pink. 
So the black pig, the kurobuta, comes from Kagoshima, and now it's worldwide well known, uh, very quality pork. So I have kurobuta char siu, and make sure the frying pan is hot enough. And when you put the pork, you can hear the nice sound. There. I have three charges today, so I'm going to grill it all together. I'm feeding the temple staff and monks to this. They eat cake too, with a gratitude in respect. So it's on high heat and just quickly move because it will burn very quickly with soy sauce and sugar. But you do want a little burn. That will give a really nice taste to char char siu pork. See? Very quick. So we'll take them. You can use the uh, broil in the grill in the oven, or you can do a charcoal grill. That would be really nice. But here I'm doing a very basic method. It's done. So remember, we're slicing this way very thin. So you want to burn thoroughly if you can. So if it's burning too fast, just lower the heat. It looks very nice. It's almost done. I'm going to burn this side a little more. And this is nice. And this side a little bit. Smells so good. Okay, it looks good. I will turn it off and move to the cutting board. Now ready to cut your char siu. Look at my char siu, it looks so nice. It makes me happy when I get the good char siu. So you're gonna slice this way. So you rolled the meat this way. So once you slice it, you will see the swirl um, design. Okay, this way. The thickness of the meat is your preference. I like thin. If you can go thin, I would go thin because you can get many slices. So this is a nice circle. And when you decorate it on the top of the ramen, the thin one, you can get more slices on top and it's easier to eat. So I'm going about quarter inch thickness, about three, four mil millimeter thickness. And this char siu pork, if you don't use it, you can just use it as a okazu, the side dish or main dish. And the also you can chop chop it up very small and then added it into your stir fry or the uh, or fried rice